Hey guys, Francis here. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the electron program of CE, and we will be learning some detection methods used in CE. By the end of this video, we will be able to read and extract information of an electron program. There are three important aspects of an electron program. The migration time, which is the x-axis, the absorbance, which is the y-axis, and the peak area, or more correctly, the corrected peak area. First of all, let's take a look at the migration time. The migration time is the time it takes for a solute to migrate from the point of introduction to the detector. Knowing the migration time and the length to the detector, we can use this information to figure out the migration rate of a solute. So recalling what we have learned from high school physics, we know that the velocity of a solute is equal to the distance travel divided by the time span. So using this simple relationship, we can simply calculate the migration rate. So the migration rate will be equal to the distance travel which is the length to the detector divided by the time span, which is the migration time. Therefore, we can calculate the migration rate using the length to the detector divided by the migration time. However, take note that the length to the detector is different from the length of the capillary. Since the detector is on the column, this is a type of on-column detection. Now that we know how to calculate the migration rate, is there any other factors that may affect the migration time that will allow us to make capillary electrophoresis even more efficient? So let's pause this video for one minute, take a pen and a piece of paper, try listing down some possible factors that you think may affect the migration time of a solute in a capillary electrophoresis. So two factors that may affect the migration time are the length of the capillary and the voltage applied. The shorter the capillary, the shorter the migration time. The greater the voltage applied, the shorter the migration time. So we know that the migration rate, the V total, is equal to the length to the detector divided by the migration time. So we can just simply rearrange this equation. Then we will get the migration time will be equal to the length to the detector divided by the migration rate. And from previous video, we know that the total migration rate is equal to the electroosmotic velocity plus the electrophoretic velocity. And the electroosmotic velocity is equal to the electroosmotic mobility multiplied by the electric field. And similarly, the electrophoretic velocity is equal to the electrophoretic mobility multiplied by the electric field. So we can simplify this into this relationship here. And the electric field is equal to the voltage applies over the length of the capillary. So as a result, we know that the total migration rate will be equal to the sum of the electroosmotic mobility and the electrophoretic mobility multiplied by the voltage applies over the length. So if we were to sub this equation into the migration time equation, we should be able to get this relationship here. So the migration time will be equal to the length to the detector divided by the sum of the electroosmotic mobility plus the electrophoretic mobility multiplied by the length of the capillary over the voltage applied. 
So we can see here, the migration time is directly proportional to the length of the capillary and it is inversely proportional to the voltage applied. Therefore, to make the electrophoresis more efficient, we can simply shorten the length of the capillary and increase the voltage applied across the capillary. Now that we have learned about the migration time and factors affecting the migration time, let's take a look at two other factors that are closely related to the detection methods. First, we have the absorbance on the y-axis of this electrophorogram. The detector we use in this experiment is very similar to the UV-Vis detector commonly used in HPLC. In CE, a typical peak may have a maximum absorbance of 2 mAU, while in HPLC, a typical peak may have a maximum absorbance of about 200 mAU. In addition, we have the peak area, or more accurately speaking, the corrected peak area, which is directly proportional to the concentration of individual analyte. So why do we need to use the corrected peak area? What is there to correct? This is because the peaks passing through a CE detector do not all pass through at the same velocity. The early eluding peaks move through the capillary more rapidly as compared to the later eluding peaks. The later eluding peaks, which are moving more slowly, usually appear to have a larger peak area relative to the earlier eluding peaks. Corrected peak area takes into account of unit migration time and therefore allows a more accurate comparison of the components in a mixture. So that's all for today. See you guys in the next video. Bye.